Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we haven't coloured in this beauty for a while, in fact we've only done the one which was with Crayola pencils. We did this one, this is on the channel if you want to have a go. Um, so I thought we'd do another page in here and I'm going to be using my Elbrick Dura pencils, the 120 set. Don't worry if you don't have them but you have polychromos, they're exactly the same colours. Um, so we're going to give it a go. Um, there are many conversion charts out there on people's channels if you um, don't have these pencils. I'm thinking of doing one myself, but it'd be just having the time to put it all together. So eventually, hopefully, we'll have one. So the page I've chosen, which you'll already know by now, is this double page beauty. From the second I did the flip through, the first page we did and this page really jumped out as one of the ones that I absolutely adored. So I'm going to go in and do the rocks around the waterfall first um, and that's just to get me into using the pencils. So I have got, um, yes let me see, what have I got? I'll get them out. I'm quite shaky today so you'll have to bear with me a bit, I don't know why. <clears throat> bit more than usual. Okay, so we have a look at these rocks and I have got, just to start with, we're going to do some where we activate them and some where we just use them as pencils. So I've got warm grey four, they will be on the screen, I've got warm grey three and warm grey one. So if we start with this beauty at the top here, I'm going to put in my warm grey, my darkest, all where Reed has given us some shadow. We are going to be going back over this and we're going to add some additional colour over the top once it's dry just to add some more interest and um, some um, a bit more yeah just a bit more interest to the page. So we're going in with our darkest. Bring that up a little bit. Then our medium, which is warm grey three. And then we'll leave this bit for our warm grey one. Okay. Like that. This bit we're going to make dark, so our darkest pencil. Around here. And there to give it the illusion of um, this bit being um, flatter at the front. So we'll put that in. Then our, our medium, which is three. And then one. Just lightly with the one. Okay, let's just... Okay, then for this bit, because it's got most of the sunlight coming on it, I'm just going to use our medium one, which we'll put in that bit there and up by those plants and then our one. Okay, let's activate that. So I've got a scraggy old tea towel here. It's clean but has gets lots of abuse in the art room and let's activate it. So let's do this top bit and I'm going to go from the lightest part of my page to the darkest or the lightest part of my colouring to the darkest. This is a Kurataki, um, Zik Kurataki brush. They are really good for tiny spaces, as are my, as is my Derwent, which I might have to get in a minute if this misbehaves. Um, so, and then I'm just going in circles and activating that colour. There we go. And then I will go back in with pencil when that's dry. And we're going to follow that same procedure on all of them. So let's pick another one that's got that looks quite challenging. Well, this one. So I'm going to go in with my darkest here. And here. Medium. And leaving that middle bit 
as light as we can possibly get it. There we go. Okay. And then here we'll have, that looks like that's water behind there, doesn't it? So we'll have this bit dark behind this leaf, all these leaves. And maybe up that edge there. So we'll fill in where those leaves are. And we'll actually, let's bring that round, that dark. And we'll emphasise that little crack in the rock there. Bring that out. Yeah, so if you don't have these, they're exactly the same colours as the Polychromos. I think all Faber-Castell range is, of pencils are exactly the same colours. Uh, I think they're um, artist ones. I don't think they're, if I remember correctly, the um, Black Edition, Faber-Castell Black Edition, I don't think they are. Okay, we'll bring that up. And then our lightest. And so here I'm going to have... This will be made darker when we go over with pencil, but I'm going to have a little bit of dark along there, just a little bit. We'll put it in at an angle. Then we'll come out with our mid-tone, just around here. And then we'll make this bit very pale. Okay, let's activate that and see what it looks like. So here's our lightest bit. Just the same really as um, using ink tents, only these will reactivate because they're watercolours. So they're not going to be permanent once they're down, like ink tents. There we go. Alright, so we can't do anything with these until they're bone dry. And they look pretty boring, don't they, at the moment. But they won't when we add the extra colours to them and things. Just a sip of tea, folks. So let's see, we've got another one over here. Like this one is underneath a load of rocks here, so that's going to be dark. So we'll put in our darkest tone. Make sure we get that nice and dark. And then our mid-tone, I'm just going to put the dark and the mid in there. And this one is having a shadow from here because Rita's given us lines, that's how we know. And I'm going to come down with the darkest just to give it the illusion of being um, convex. Not a big word for Lucy at this time of night. So channel membership is going really well. I've put the first Colour With Me video up. Um, we are completing, working to complete Romantic Country, the second tale, together. There we go. So it's very exciting and um, a big, big challenge, but all of us doing it together is really lovely. And I'm wiping my brush off so that when I get to the darker parts, I don't get it too dark. And also, my brush doesn't let the page get too wet. And that way we don't get a load of crinkles. There we go. So... We have got rocks everywhere. We've got them down here. So wherever Rita's put the lines will be our darkest bit. Um, yeah, or lines or dots indicate the darkest bit. Don't forget to make sure that you... Let's just do this one together, like here. Um, so I'm going to put my darkest pencil in there. And then up the side here, can you see the lines? There's lines there. So that bit I'm going to make really dark. And then I'm just going to put a little bit there, darker there, and then our mid-tone, then our light, because this is a little bit more of a complicated one. So we've got um, like a crack in the rock here, so we're going to put our dark in there and bring that down. And here. And underneath that that rock there. Let's give that a bit of shadow. Dark in there. Round there. Now and be careful because there's water flowing in between these. So 
just have to sort of keep an eye out for where that water is. In with our mid-tone and let's bring that out. And at this point you'll see, because we're going to go back in with the pencils without activating them over the top. We could use poly polychromos but as I've got these out we're going to use these. Uh, they'll just, they'll really come alive. So, and a little bit of the light there. So that is really it. I think you're going to be very bored if I sit and do every single um, stone with you. Every single rock. Let's just pull that colour out there. Okay. So Lucy is going to go off and complete all the rocks on the page. They're only on this page, I do believe. Yes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Then we will meet back up and um, when the page is dry and I will show you how what colours I'm going to put on the top and then I think we'll address the water before we do anything else. All right, my lovely, see you in a sec. Okay, I'm back. The page is completely dry, which is what you need it to be. I know this because it's the next day. <laughs> Let's zoom in so we can have a look. And we're going to add some detail to these rocks before we go any further. So I've got... Um, a few of the colours, a few of the original colours, and I've I've got um, I've added um, warm grey six, and we've got um, the warm grey three and the warm grey one, and we're going to add um, a little bit of interest by adding um, dark Naples ochre, burnt ochre. I know, don't yeah, just look, just give me a chance. I know you're thinking, Lucy, you've lost the plot and earth green yellowish <clears throat> so to start with we're going to darken up where I want those deeper areas on our rock so let's be, let's start with this one so I'm going to take the warm grey six and I'm going to put that down we can have that quite dark around there And then I'm going to take a little bit of the um, burnt ochre, just a little bit. Let's just add some variation in our rock so it's just not so flat. And then we're going to take the um, warm grey three. We'll blend over that. Bring that up here. And then our lightest colour, which is the warm grey one. You can go back over this with water if you want to, but I'm not going to. And then I'm going to take the earth green yellowish. Now, where it's near this water and the plants, I'm going to drop a little bit of that earth green yellowish in. Okay. And then we can go back in. So I'm going to deepen that up even further. Then I'm going to come in with our warm grey three. I think I missed that out, didn't I? Like that. going to put a warm grey three here. So that. <coughs> oh excuse me. <coughs> Can't clear my chest. Then the dark Naples ochre and we're going to put a little bit of that on the lightest side of our rock. Maybe a little bit down here to help blend that through. And then we're going to use our palest colour, the warm grey one, just to smush that in. Okay, we're going to do the same on this one. 
So we're going to have a little bit of dark around here. So it really emphasises that um, rock uh, shape so it's 3D instead of just flat. And then our warm grey 3. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of the Naples yellow in here. I'm thinking of doing um, a kind of like tropical sky, so it'll be probably pinks, pale pink and yellow, or maybe orange and yellow, so, and then uh, burnt ochre. So this will kind of make sense when we pull it all together, but it will just, uh, my, my thought process being is that it's sort of an early morning, our beautiful lady out on her boat. <clears throat> is a, has been early morning gathering but I think you'll agree that that adds just that little bit of much more interest instead of the just being flat like that so we've done our three colours which we would normally do together and then we're just adding more interest so if you don't want to do this part of it you don't have to just have a sip of tea so if I can clear my throat <coughs> Oh dear. Okay, let's go and do another one. Let's have a look at. Um, well, let's do this one. Let's do this one down here. This being an interesting one. So we're going in with our darkest. We'll put that there. And then if we go through our greys again, I mean, even if you don't want to add all these colours, you can go back over. You can add water if you want or not, but if we go back through our greys, you can instantly see that, that you get a deeper result. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of green in this one <coughs> because it's by the waterfall and there might be some algae growth next to those plants. Like that. And we can have <coughs> a little bit of maybe the Naples yellow, dark Naples yellow. There we go. All right, let's do this bit. So that's really dark in there. We can always get a black in there if we need to, in between the rocks. Uh, then we're going to bring out our. <coughs> oh, I do apologise. I think it seems to have gone. I had a frog there this morning. Bring out that dark. Now, um, a lot of people say that these are um, much softer than polychromers. Well, they are, but I don't know if you know what I mean when I say there's drag. That's how only way I can sort of describe it. Um, when you're colouring with them dry, uh, they are smooth and soft, they are, but there is kind of a... I don't know, like I call it drag, but it's like, um, almost like it sort of sticks to the page, do you know what I mean? It's really hard to explain, but that, that doesn't mean to say they're not nice to colour with, they are the beautiful to colour with, and lovely to colour with dry, sorry this is the burnt ochre, lovely to colour with dry, um, but just to be aware that there is that kind of, what I call drag, I don't know how else to explain it. So that was our yellow ochre and we're just going to go in with a tiny bit of and I'm going to use the um, dark Naples ochre just to sort of emphasise the light hitting the rock and then we can go back in with our very palest colour and use that to blend like that. Okay so let's do one up here. Um, I just want to make sure that you can, if you want to add these additional colours, you can. Okay, so I'm going in with my, our darkest grey. We're going to, like I say, we're going to go through the greys. We're going to put them in the same place as we did before. 
and if you're not happy, if you don't think your colouring is smooth enough, reactivate it with water. <coughs> and um, that's one of the benefits of watercolour pencils is that, let's make that dark there, is that you um, can smooth out any unwanted lines, especially with the Albert Durers, they, they, um, they dissolve on the paper just beautifully. Um, yeah, you can smooth out any unwanted colouring lines um, just by adding a little bit more water. So I don't know what the background's going to be like because I haven't used them for big spaces so that will be interesting if indeed I use um, them for back the background. I want, um, I'm thinking of having a sunrise here and then going from yellow, orange, maybe pink. That's what my thought process is, just to keep it that beautiful African feel, you know, of bright colours, warmth. Okay, so there's that one. I'm keeping my Albert Durers in their trays, so I'm putting them back in their slots if you wonder what the noise is. Um, let's do this one. We've got it by the waterfall there. So uh, do I want it, do you want it dark by the water or light by the water? It's your choice, but um, I think I'm just, well, we've got the lines here, so I'm going to go in dark there. Let's pull that dark in. Emphasise that. And then we'll put our mid-tone in. And then I'm going to take the Naples yellow and just run that in there and hopefully that will just give us lighten them up a bit and um, just give you know, your page a bit more interest so dark is grey I've gone down that crack you can make it a bit wider towards the top if you want like that bring that shadow out mid grey And a very pale grey. And then let's have a tiny bit of uh, burnt ochre down this edge. And that shadow maybe around there. It will help it appear not so flat. And then we'll put a little bit of yellow ochre in there. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean, the colours are all on the screen. Okay, I think that's a world away from, um, oh gosh, I hope you could see that. Oh no, we'll do another one, but I think they're a world away from this. Um, just, yeah, so much more interesting. They're not realistic, but uh, it certainly helps. So I'm going in with my dark. I do apologise if I wasn't on screen. I am so sorry getting carried away so we'll do this one together we'll finish this one together so we'll put our dark in there and then as usual we'll run through our greys we can shadow that crack a little bit more here we go add in our playlist can always get some white as well. Now white I'll probably use Prisma when I, I know that I don't need to activate it anymore. I'm going to take the burnt ochre and I'm just going to run that in the darkest areas. Just lightly. Like that. And then because I've given this one the illusion of quite a lot of light hitting it there, I'm going to put in the dark Naples yellow. Is it yellow? Ochre. Oh my goodness. I'll never remember the colours. That's part of me being me. I can't help it. <laughs> my brain just will not keep things in there like that. Okay. So, once you're happy with them... Um, Haha, 
I know where my white is today because my desk has been tidied. Or I know where a white is. <laughs> so once you're happy with them, we can use a little bit of white. Whatever white you've got. This is a Prisma. A stubby little bit of Prisma. And just enhance that white patch. Particularly if you feel you've gone a bit dark. I might have gone a bit dark in this area. There we go. Just pull that through. There we go. Um, should we do one more just because I didn't, I wasn't sure I was on camera earlier. Should we do this little fella? Okay, so we'll run through our, our greys. So darkest. And we'll come down this side here. And we can pull that crack out, make it a little bit bigger. And we'll come in there on the front of this one. Avoiding those bubbles. And then, yeah, still running through our greys. And we missed out the green on that one, didn't we? Let's put a little bit of green. Why can we put that um, here? We'll just put a little bit of green there. You don't have to have it on every one, but if um, if the water's meeting it, it might be an idea to have a little bit of algae. We might have some sort of moss or algae growing on the on the rocks. So a little bit of burnt ochre. And I think this just helps to give them some dimension. That's a good word. That's what I was looking for. A little bit of dimension. So they're not just flat on the page. So we've done like our usual colouring with our three colour blend or our, 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 you know, we might have used more. But then just go back in to add these little bits of colour. Makes a huge difference. Um... Green. I want some green. So we, this is earth green, earth green, yellowish. And we're going to put that in. Put a little bit around there too. And on this one. There. So it just gives, sort of gives it like a, I don't know, some sort of growth on there instead of it just being. Um, put a little bit on there. I hope you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so then like this bit here, where these leaves are going to go in, I'm going in with our darkest grey, where these um, leaves are causing a lot of shade. And Rita's indicated that with all the little dots. I'm going to go in with our darkest shade. Then our mid grey. Like that. And we can even in there add that burnt ochre. Um, I'm still checking the colours, even now. How many times have I told you and I'm still <laughs> having to look? A little bit of burnt ochre in there just to deepen, darken that up even more if we feel we need to. Like that. Okay, so that really stands out. Oh, there was my other white. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping that you feel that you'd be able to carry on doing those by yourself. But what we will do, if I can, I'll have to tip you. Come with me. Come on, let's have a little journey. There we go. Let's have a look at this one down here, just to make sure. So this is on the water's edge, so um, I might want to add some more colour to this at a later date once we've got the water in and that plant in. But we'll run through our greys. I think these are definitely going to be, providing the paper's good enough of course, I think these are going to be um, a very favourite medium to use because 
they're, they're quite fast once you get the hang of um, watercolouring. I mean, if I was at all proficient, I probably could have done that in one go, but I'm not. <laughs> um, so let's make this dark round here. So we want to give this illusion of the illusion of um, convex. There's my word again, very proud. <laughs> Don't judge me folks, it's the small things. Okay, and then run through that grey. Blend it out with this one. Okay, so there's some plant life here. So maybe we've got some moss or whatever it is, algae growing on there. So let's put a little bit of green on there. Just put it where you want to put it, you know, but I think if um, the green goes where the plants are, water's edge, um, that probably makes more sense for that. We're going to go in with a little bit of burnt ochre. The burnt ochre sort of where the darkest, coming out of the darkest parts, and the, na the dark Naples yellow where I want to indicate that it's lighter. And then when you're done, a little bit of grey to smooth things over, the palest grey. And then we can go in with our trusty white, just make sure it's clean. And just push that through. And then you can have a look, do I need darker? I want. I think I want that edge a little bit darker, so go back in again. You know, it's completely up to you, but it's just playing really, isn't it? Just having fun with it. Bring that up here a little bit more. There. Okay, let's come out and have a look. Um, and if these rocks are becoming going to be my nemesis, thank goodness they're only on one page. <laughs> There's not a lot actually. When you when we've we've done those together, there is not a lot left really. Um, we've got the ones down the bottom here. Um, yeah, there's not. It's not too bad. I suppose there is quite a lot, if I'm honest with you. Okay, I'm going to go colour rock heaven and <laughs> we'll meet back up in a second. All right, you lovely lot, I'm back. It's now night time. <laughs> Don't know what happens, I go off for ten minutes and then five hours has passed. Anyway, so we're going to focus on the water, I think, now, which is a large element of this page. And I think then we'll feel a whole lot better about the other little bits. It won't seem so busy. So I think if we do part one, we do the water and the sky. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we can do the leaves, the beautiful lady and her boat and the rest of the elements after that. So I've broken it down again into um, three pencils that we can blend quite easily in together. Um, and then we'll go back when it's dry with... Some, the dry pencils and some darker ones to help. So I've got um, cobalt green, light cobalt turquoise and I've got sky blue. The usual typical colours for water. Let's come in and have a look. Let's do this one first. Let's do this, this top full first. So I'm going to take the light cobalt turquoise first and I'm holding my pencil right back I'm going to get a piece of paper just to put it under. Can you see how the pages sort of overlap? And if I don't put a piece of paper in there, it's going to, um, we'll get watercolour on there. So I'm just taking the light cobalt turquoise. Now primarily on this part, I want the light cobalt turquoise to show up where there's least activity on the water if that makes sense. So at least lines. But I'm going in lightly all over. So let's make sure we get some of that colour in there. Do 
yeah they are um, really really lovely pencils to work with they dissolve like a dream okay we'll have a little bit more there let's take our um, sky blue I'm going to put that around the edges and bring that in have it in there as well Okay, and then we're going to deepen up the dark, the bits that we think will be darker areas. So where we just put closer lines, that gives us a clue. Um, with the cobalt green. And we'll just drop that in there. And we can go back in and add some more colour. I feel this is a bit light here. So we'll add a little bit more of the cobalt, cobalt turquoise, light cobalt turquoise, yeah. And then a bit more of the blue. Okay, let's activate. I'll swish you round. And again, um, just from the lightest to the darkest. I'm going to smush those colours in together. So I'm finding the lightest bits and then we'll come into the dark and blend those out or activate them. You don't have to be too precise because we're going to go over it. This just gives us a really good base. I'm going to try and follow that flow of that water. There we go. That will be the first part. And then I've got other colours to go over that. didn't activate this little bit down here. Not that there's hardly any colour there. <laughs> so let's do this next bit. So we're going to take the light cobalt turquoise. I'm not fussed about those because I'm going to go over those with Posca. Make it look like um, the water's hitting the hitting hard on that bit and creating a foam okay and then our blue okay and then darken that up with our cobalt turquoise Cobalt green, sorry. A bit more of the blue. And a tiny bit more of the light cobalt turquoise. Okay, let's activate that. Just wiping my brush off in between. There we go. All right. <clears throat> and then we just have to wait to let them dry. It doesn't take long in between because we don't need to use that much water. Shall we do this giant bit? Okay, so our lightest colour first which is the light um, turquoise then our blue and we can always go back in when we add Posca we can always go back in with um, white bits which I will do anyway um, and the beauty of these, well, the, it's a beauty. It's a, it's beauty and a and a. Uh, I was going to say a blessing and a curse in disguise. Um, is that Posca will pick up your colour from watercolour pencils, so you might have to do a couple of layers, let it dry, you know, do a couple of layers, if you want it really white. 
and then in with our turquoise in the darker spots. Like this. Okay, <coughs> and we can activate it. Again, from light into dark. You know, if you're happy with it, you don't even need to activate if you don't want to. These pencils are fantastic, just as they are. But I like the way they all blend in and make a new colour and. There we go. All right. And then we've just got this final bit of the waterfall to do. So we'll take our turquoise. I think you're getting the, the idea, aren't you? We'll take our turquoise. And our blue. And then our um, green. That looks pretty nice as it is, but when we add um, darker colours, when it's dry and we go over it with these colours and darker colours, it's just going to look so cool. Right, let's go in there. Okay. And activate that. And you'll see this bit's quite scruffy, so you'll see when I put the water on it just how beautifully they dissolve. There's no, like, lines left that I don't want in there. Just beautiful. Look at that. There we are. Okay, now um, let's do this bottom part. So we've got all these bubbles and water here. I'm just going to shut my window, it's freezing. Got, got quite a wind blowing through there. Um, okay, well, I don't know what I'm saying. What was I saying? Can't remember. <laughs> oh, um, when, we, when we come back to do um, the other bits, the other elements around here, we can um, add different colours to the water if we want to then. So this is my green. I'm going to put that round these darker bits. And under our, our like a pelican, isn't he? That's what I'm going to call him, a pelican. Because he's got that big fish catching bill. So that's what I'm going to call him. So we're going to have some colour on here. I'm, I'm not sure yet. I wanted sort of really warm colours. So um, we can always add some reflection in the water there. Okay, in with our blue. And our light turquoise. I'm going to have to be quite careful activating these round here because um, 
while activating these parts when we come to do leaves and the little tiny butterfly. Where have I thrown my brush? There it is. So I'm just going to leave this bit fairly light for the time being until I know if I want to add more colour over the top, um, you know, different colours. So I'm going to pull a bit of that turquoise in those bubbles. We'll go back and do that in a minute. Okay. And then I think if we add, let's add a little bit of blue to these bubbles. Can you see? Yeah. Let's add some blue, just a bit of pale blue so that when I put Posca on it to make it look like um, the, f the foam, the, the blue will come through. We don't need too much, just a little bit. Okay, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I'll come back and sort that bit out in a second. But just a hint of colour. So I'm doing it just in section by section, just so it makes it life easier for me. So I'm taking my green, put that green in around those rocks. And we'll do that here as well. Let's follow that pattern on the water there with our green. Okay, then our blue. And then a little bit of our light turquoise. And we'll activate that. Already it looks like we've coloured so much just by doing these little bits of water, doesn't it? Okay. Right, we've got another section down here. So I think I'm probably going to take a Rita's... Sorry, I hope I'm not making you dizzy, keep pushing the page round. I think I'm probably going to use Rita's lines to help me with the water. So I'm taking my green I'm probably going to follow that ripple. And let's do that one there. And bring that up here. Makes sense. And there. And round here. So round our bird. Okay, and then we just follow those lines with our other colours. So in with our blue. It doesn't matter too much because we're going to go back, like I say, but if it gives you a method and helps you get the water down, then that's good, isn't it? If it makes life easier. Okay, and then a light cobalt turquoise. I'm just filling the spaces. I'm going to put some on there as well. Okay, let's activate. Make sure we get right up in that. Um, gap between the two pages. Seems as it is a double page. brush it's dried up on me there we go that's better ok 
Okay. I'm pleased with that. Okay, then we can do the same on the, let me just move it over, do the same on this page. So if we follow Rita's lines, now it would make sense to me that um, our darkest colour is next to the boat. Obviously because the boat's going to cast some kind of shadow in the water, wouldn't it? So let's, let's do that, let's put our darkest colour there and then we'll follow Rita's lines. Okay, so we've got our dark bit there. Let's bring this dark turquoise all the way around this little swirl here. Or our green colour, sorry. To meet our fishies and round. I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's good. And then we'll put in the blue. And the light turquoise. Okay. And then we'll reverse it here. So we've got our dark green here. So if we now add the blue next to that. Bring that out to there. And then our light turquoise to here. And we can go back in and do it again. Okay, so let's go in now with our Let's go back to our dark turquoise. Yeah, so let's do this bit. Can you see? Yeah. Let's do this as dark turquoise. In there. Tiny bit in between those water lilies. And bring that round. Let's use that whole bit there for our turquoise. Then our blue. We can put all that in there as blue. Bring it up there. And in there. We need it there too, around that turquoise. And we put it on the boat. And around here, so we can have that as blue. See, it, so it'll just, if, we, if I stick to that, then I know it stops that sort of guessing game of where I'm going to put bits. So we've got our blue down here. I've got to make sure I've got enough blue. And we'll need a little bit of turquoise round the lily pads. So let's put, sorry, the green round the lily pads. Let's do that. Like I say, don't worry, we can always go back in and darken it all up. And then we're going to take our turquoise, just using the side of the pencil. Put that in there, right up to that bit. Yeah. 
and some blue in there, I think. A little bit of our blue. Okay, now what we have to do is activate that. Let's have a look. Dropped my cloth. Oh! <laughs> okay, so let's do this blue round here. I'll come back and do that in a bit. And anywhere that hasn't got colour I can add in a minute. I can pull that turquoise out, or that green out look, further. And the further we pull it out, the lighter it gets. So that's nice, it'll give us a different, um, different tone, shade. Can you see? Shouldn't really be using this fine brush to do all this. And you'll see why I'm going to leave that in a minute when we do the sky. Concentrating, sorry folks, if I've gone quiet, I'm going to have to use a bigger brush for up the side there. Easy as that, folks. Okay. Right, I'm going to switch my brush. Just going to have to make sure it's clean. So I've got uh, my Derwent, which is like the middle tip, which is really nice. It's a nice. The, the Derwents are brilliant. They don't put down too much water, um, so it doesn't. You don't get bleed through. They just behave, which is lovely. So I'm just going side to side. I'm going to pull that right the way up. Before we do now. There we go, and we're activated. Look at that, isn't that lovely? So I'm just going to do the same round here. I'm going to have to put more colour in over here, but I want to get the sky done with you before I do that. Okay, all right, let's come out and have a look. Wow, it looks like we've just literally coloured loads. Um, very quick, aren't they, the watercolours? Okay, page is very wet, so I don't want to mess too much with it. Okay, now, the lovely backs brought me the King Art um, gel sticks. These ones, I'll show you these ones and they are gorgeous so you could use your Albert Durer's for the background but I think I'm going to go in and try creating a bit of a um, pink well these colours are pink yellow sky very tropical looking sky okay so let me see right let's go in with pink Let's do it and be brave, folks. You've got to be proud of me. All right, so this is what they are. They're like a little lipstick, and they do have the names on them. So this is just pink. Okay, be brave, Lucy, Lucy, Lou. Go for it. So I'm just going to put in some linear strokes. Oh, 
I will activate them so it's not going to stay looking like this, don't worry. And that's why I don't want to get that bit wet just for now. Let's bring that down like that. I'm not forgetting that it's a double page spread, so we have to make sure that pink will join up. So these are like Neo Colours or Gelatos, but the difference being is they are, oh they're so creamy, it's like putting a lipstick on the page. And um, they, um, I've tested it and they just blend out beautifully. This is tan it's called, but it's more like a peach colour, you'll see in a minute. Look, I'll show you like that, more like a peach. So I'm then going to drop that in and I am going over those bubbles. I'm going to drop that in. Let's create a bit of an arc. I know, aren't I being brave? What the heck? Okay, then we've got um, lemon. Now this I'm going to start to um, introduce as almost like sunrise because I said I wanted it to be like early in the morning, like a tropical glow. Then we've got um, primrose yellow. Oh gosh, that's bright, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to see if I can erase those because I've just gone over. Not that it matters, it doesn't matter. I'll get a colour over them. And then, sorry, this one is just yellow. I know it looks a whole mess, doesn't it? Let me see if I can erase that. It's a good experiment here. Kind of, but it won't matter because we can have a bit of reflection in the water. Now the fun part, folks. Let's activate. So I've got my chunky brush here, Derwent chunky brush. Let's activate. So it's important that you've got paper behind you and you've got enough water. Look at that, look at how they dissolve. Now we might need to do more than one layer. I don't know because I've never used them properly in a book. But look at that. Oh, isn't that, oh, I'm so impressed, they're so beautiful. And you could use your brush, um, like a, a blender brush. You don't have to go in and go straight onto the page if you don't want to. But I just had this idea of sort of tropical, delicate sky. Let's pull that up, that beautiful orange. Let's get that up there. Look at that. Just making sure I've got enough water going on my brush. And what I plan to do with those bubbles is go over with a white pencil just to tone the colour down and then outline them obviously. Gonna activate that and hope that I can colour over those. Okay, that's that bit. I know it looks a bit of a mess now, but like I say, this is layer one. We will go back in. Let's get some water. Move my paper. Oh, 
razor marks on there. And then again, like anything uh, we do with water, I'm going to let it completely dry before I move on to doing another layer or pencil or anything else over the top. So I didn't want this to have like a lot of form, I just wanted it loose, those loose colours to represent the, the warmth of the country and the morning. And I think it'll work when we've got all the rest of the colours down on the page. When we've finished everything else I think it'll look lovely, but we just have to let it dry. It's the only downside isn't it to using water mediums really. Um, Oh, not only, but is a downside. You've got to wait. Who's got time to be patient? Okay, right. Now don't over scrub it, Lucy. Leave it. Just want to. Okay. Look at that. Let's try and get that out. Get some more water on my brush. I get rid of that as much as I can. Look at that. What do you think, folks? I've left you out as far as I can so you can see the whole thing. There's a little bit I haven't activated over there. Look. And then I'll go back in and we'll tidy it up on our second coat. So I'm going to take a couple of little, just a little tip. I've got a couple of little um, bulldog clips. And I'm just going to place those, pull the paper back out. And place them on the edges. And hopefully that will stop it crinkling too much. Let's straighten that out. Okay. And we can put another couple. And then I find that the best way to do it is um, air dry it. Just let it air dry. Oh, come on. And then um, it doesn't seem to crinkle as much as if you use a heat gun, I find. And I'm just going to put another one there. And I'm just going to... I can see there where there's a ripple, so I'm going to pull that back out. And here now, look. There. And then just let it flat dry. So, there we go. Obviously it needs work, it's a bit rough, but it won't be. So I'll go off, let that completely dry, and then we'll meet back up, we'll finish the waterfall and the sky together. All right, I'll see you in a sec. Okay, it's dry, and I've just pulled up a little bit of the, <coughs> excuse me again, the blue and the light turquoise, just to fill in that, we're, we're gonna go back in again, like I said. So let's get this sky done. So I'm gonna go back in, I'm going to put more pink on. Because it's gone um, very washed out, hasn't it? And I want it a little bit brighter than how we've got it. need my paper back. <clears throat> I did cheat and I did use the um, heat gun with my clips on there because I just, otherwise I'd have to wait like till tomorrow morning. But if you can let it air dry, that would be my advice. Let's get enough of this beautiful pink down. And remember that it's a double page, so I need to pull this colour in to both pages. What do you think, folks? It's not like me, is it? What's going on? I just, I do feel quite confident using them that, you know, that they're going to dissolve. 
um, I think they feel easier to use than the Neo Colours. There's obviously not um, as many as, as much variety of colour. There's 48 in that set. I don't know if there's any more colours or if that's the biggest set. But I just feel very confident with them. I'm going to come down here and tone down some of that very bright yellow. Make sure I get up in there. And then I can see her with sort of browns and oranges in her clothing, earth tones, that's how I see it, I don't know whether that's how it will play out, but let's get enough colour down, and then I'm going to use, which was the one that wasn't so bright, one of them was really bright wasn't it? I think it was that one, the um, yellow. What's this one? Is that the really bright one? I can't tell. Yeah, it was. So I'm going to use the um, lemon as the... So a little bit of lemon. And I've missed out the... Um, Oh, primrose and we're gonna have a bit of have a bit of orange just transitioning pushing out that beautiful Sun there we go okay let's try and activate that now do I think I've got enough color I'm just gonna go back in with the pink and I'm just gonna make sure Why not, folks? Why not? Our supplies are to be are here to be used and thoroughly enjoyed, and I certainly am on this page. I'm very brave. What is going on? I have no idea what's taken over me. I've been possessed by um, the colouring bug. I'm just going to put another piece of paper behind here. Okay, are you ready, folks? Let's do this. Got my water brush, I filled it back up. Let's go. All right, let's do this. Look at that, just look how they dissolve. They are so beautiful. So I'm gonna to try to remember that it's a double page, so um, I'm gonna bring the colors, just getting some more water out. Here we go. Bring the colours across both pages. There we go. Like that, get in that joint and pull them out. Pull out that colour. Oh, that's so exciting. Look at that. And then you can always use pencil over the top, even if you want to deepen that up further. Or, you know, add some sort of shape and definition to it all, you could. I'm going to pull that yellow-orange up into there. I get so excited about things like this. Do you guys? Like it's just when you have um, a disability and you um, it has a massive impact on physical activity and you know you do feel like you're missing out. And um, so when I spend a lot of what I'm trying to say is I spend an awful lot of my time in my little room doing this because I'm restricted to the things I can do. So when when new supplies. When I get new supplies, colouring books and things like that that I'm going to be able to use, I just, I'm just like a child. I am i can't help myself. And I feel especially brave and proud of myself today. 
because I would never ordinarily slap some colour on the page and hope for the best. But like I say, they are very easy to use, very easy to use. I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to bring some... Well, I don't know, we'll see. Just occasionally giving my brush a little squeeze to make sure there's enough water to activate them. But Rita's books are amazing, they, they'll take water if you're not like sloshing it on there. What do you think? Does it does it speak warmth and happy and sunlight to you guys? I think what I'm going to do is, when it's dry again, is add some more um, yellow along the bottom here. More of that yellow and orange along the bottom there and pull that up into the image. There. I don't want to overwork the page because I'll ruin the paper. Push that up in there and then I'm going to get my little clips again. I can't, they don't fit. <laughs> and I left a dirty mark one of these. I'm not very happy. Probably got rusty on me where I keep using them on wet pages. <laughs> That'd be my luck. Oh, do come along. Stop stressing me out. There. Alright. Let's just stretching the page back out. And then we'll put another one there. Okay, so I'm going to go off, I'm going to dry this off camera so that I don't deafen you and then I'm going to put a little bit of the, um, what did we use, a little bit of the lemon around the bottom and pull that up into the sky and then we'll meet back up and we'll finish the water together. Alright lovelies, see you in a second. Okay guys, I've done quite a few layers but I wanted it more... I don't know, cloudy, wispy, I don't know what the word is. So I'm taking my Posca, fat Posca. It's a five mil, excuse my blister, um, there. Five mil, 1.8 to 2.5, you can use any Posca, but um, and what I'm gonna do, don't be scared, honestly, um, I am gonna scribble. Just make sure. I know that looks horrendous, just bear with me one second. And then activate, wet that Posca. And the colour underneath will reactivate and mix in with that Posca, but it will give us a more, I don't know, dreamy look, I suppose, a little wispy clouds. I don't want um, a load of white clouds on there, that wasn't the plan, but um, just soften it, I suppose. And I'm going to pull it out. I can do that with the, um, anywhere just where, like here, it's got, I'm just going to, clean off the Posca. Anywhere that it's got like, I went too dark I think here, and we'll just pull that white Posca over. Also it'll help to seal that colour in. And then if you, you know, you, you feel that it's gone too pale, you can go back over that again. You can do that with the Thule Art Pens, which is one of the reasons why I absolutely adore the Thule Art Pens. Let's put some wisps up here. Just keep, I'm, I'm wiping, when I go off screen, I'm just wiping my brush off. But I just thought that was quite cool and it might be something you'd like to see. You know, and you can just play about with creating some sort of atmosphere. We can go over those bubbles. 
you know I think that looks quite cool doesn't it what do you think we'll do some over here I'm sorry if this video is going to be quite long but um, people were concerned that I wouldn't be doing colour with me's on the channel since I've set up membership that's not going to be the case at all the reason I set up membership is because I'd never finished a colouring book and um, a lot of people then commented and said they hadn't either so um, and I knew that on the channel people people like to see different things they don't want to see the same thing over and over again so I thought if I set up membership then I know that everybody that everybody's there wants to see romantic country but no I'm certainly not going to be disappearing off the scene um, you guys are my like my family okay I really like that um, I really like that effect so I don't know if you can see on camera it looks psychedelic but it's not um, and that's just helped her um, and I can go back in I'll let it you have to leave, keep the, the only like I say the only downfall is you have to keep going back in but we can go back in with some pencils and sort of define things if we wanted to but okay let's have a look at this water while we're waiting for all that background to to dry and we used the from dark to light we used the um, cobalt green the um, sky blue and the light cobalt turquoise and we're going to add in I know it seems very dark but we are now going to add in um, Prussian blue and deep cobalt green so if I bring you in um, let's find a bit so like I mentioned earlier where all Rita's got the heavier lines that's where I'm going to make things darker and I'm going to use these two to start with so the deep cobalt green and the Prussian blue and you'll be surprised just how well they work so this is deep cobalt green and um, I wouldn't have thought of putting this in water but in our dark areas it's really going to bring this water to life so we'll put that in there and there having a lot of fun with these playing with all this these mediums I might put some more wisps on the background I'm certainly going to go over the bubbles this is our blue and I'm not going to activate this I'm just going to um, use the pencils dry as is my green and then we can go back to our other colours so let's take our um, cobalt green and we'll mix that in I'm going to try and leave that area soft in the centre. You don't need to do this on every area. And then our blue. And I'm going to leave the water, um, this part down below, I'm going to leave that because I think I want to add some um, sort of reflections of green and and things in there when I when we get to that part. Okay, and our turquoise. Okay, and I'll show you why I've added all that when we put the posca on. Um, it just comes alive comes to life back in with my blue there okay so let's do this bit oh that's still wet I have to be careful um, the blue 
So our dark, dark blue, Prussian blue. And again, I'm going to bring that out following the lines that Rita's given us for the water. Okay, then our deep cobalt green. And if we do it and just let those other colours show through, it's going to have more of that sort of natural. natural look, feel, I don't know, <laughs> cobalt green, and then let's go in with, uh, let's go in with our blue, there's a lot of green there, let's do the um, sky blue, okay, then if we put sky blue lightly over these bubbles like we did earlier, lightly over the bubbles and those bubbles. Make sure you're ready to um, put your Posca on because you won't be able to, well you can go back but it makes it difficult. Okay, now I'm going to take my chunky fat Posca again. Any Posca will do, it's just that I've got this one to hand and I'm going to add some fat dots in there. And I'll come back in with a finer pen. And we'll refine those dots. Okay, let's get a finer white Posca. Standard, is this a standard one? No, this is the next one. This is three mils. But any Posca you've got will be fine. They're only it's just dots. It's not. I'm just not very good at randomizing things. Bit of a control freak, I think, if I'm honest. So if I've got different sizes of Poscas, um, I don't have that issue. Okay, so that's going to pick up the colour. Just be aware that I'm just, I've am just i got a scrap piece of paper next to me and I'm just cleaning off my Posca. Don't let it dry like that. We'll just build up that foam of where the water's cascading down. Well, obviously I've got to do that bit, so... Um, like that. I'm going to put some more colour on there, I think, before I do that. Um, I'm just going to make sure I've covered up all the white, all the black lines, all the black dots that, or circles that Rita's given us. There we go. All right, folks. So I am going to go and finish the waterfall, but I don't think I'm going to do any more to the water down here because, um, like I said, I want, well, when we've done the bow and the other bits, I might want to add some reflections on there. Um, I am going to, however. I should be taking a clean Posca, which this one is not. I've just said don't leave them like that. And I will be circling them. Now, I, th I suspect that the King Art colours will come through again, which is no bad thing. When I can get my Posca to work, I will be going around those bubbles. All right, my lovely friends, I will let you come out and we'll have a look. Um, I hope you like it so far. I'll come back when I've done the, the waterfalls and all the splashes are all done. And we'll meet back up then. OK, guys, sorry, I'm just jumping in here. I've lost a clip somewhere along the way. And it's how I change the sky. This is our current page that we're doing. And this is how my sky looks now. And I've added these clouds. I know I wasn't going to have clouds, but I was having so much fun with my Posca. that um, I'm sorry, I'm just popping in to show you how I did it. This is my practice book, the one that's not signed by Rita. So I just took my white Posca. And I had to hand ready a my paintbrush. So I'll get that ready. I've got it so it's 
damp, um, not soaking wet. And then I'm just going to draw like a random squiggle. It looks dreadful, I know. But, and then I'm just going to straight away take my paintbrush. It might not show up too well on this yellow, but... And then pull that acrylic paint, because that's what Posca is. Pull it out. That's it. Just into whatever like cloud shape you want. Um, and then you just get these gorgeous clouds. There's a little one up there that I practiced. I don't know if you can see that, because this is just my practice page. So um, if we go back now to the original, here we are. Okay, so I'll let you I'll let you cut into the final bit of the video now. Thanks, guys. Sorry about that. All right, my lovely. See you in a sec. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, the sky's evolved a little bit. I didn't want clouds initially, but I was having so much fun playing with the white posca and water, and it just blended beautifully over the top of those King Art crayons, um, gel crayons. So I loved it. So. The waterfall, I've do, all I've done is added um, the white Posca dots that I showed you and down here I just added the um, blue and um, light cobalt turquoise to um, where the bubbles are and then just dotted over it. I didn't activate it, it was too pale. So I think I'm going to call it part one because I owe you a video. It's been four days since the last time I posted. so. I'm going to call it part one for this evening, if you don't mind. And um, I know we've had a lot to do there, going on there. The bubbles are up here I'm going to leave. I'm probably going to do with gel pen um, to make them sort of match the outside colour of the sky. Or Thule art pens, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but I really hope that you've enjoyed it. I have loved playing and being brave. And now I know how to do clouds. So there we are. So if I ever want clouds, I just take a chunky Posca and a paint, a water brush and away I will go. So that's probably going to feature very heavily in the channel from now on. <laughs> but, so I've wasted all that money on stencils, but no, they will come in handy. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I, I hope you like it, the way it's turning out. I love it. I am so happy with it. And I am thrilled with my Albert Dura pencils. I just love them. I love the way they work. I love the way they, um, they um, don't leave pencil marks when you activate them. Just beautiful. So, until we meet again in the next few days, next few days, I hope you really enjoyed spending time with me. I've loved spending time with you. Um, so until we meet again for part two, take really good care of yourselves. I hope your working week speeds through <laughs> and I will see you in the next couple of days. Nanai everyone. <laughs>